Happy Thursday morning, and we're pleased to be joined, as we are every Thursday, by the mayor of the city of Fall River, Mayor Paul Coogan. Mayor, how are you this morning? I'm doing fine, Keith. How about you? I am doing well. Um, you know, we'll get right into COVID again. Yesterday, the city saw a an uptick. It was the highest uh, daily uh, case, new case uh, per day in the city of Fall River, uh, over 100, 118. Again, any trends that the city can report on? Are we still status quo? Any other uh, we're, things that we can share about what we're seeing here? Well, we're checking one of our nursing homes got hit. Um, we're working with them today. We'll be calling all the nursing homes to see their status. Um, I was told yesterday in my conversation with the, uh, the nurse from the Department of Health, there was no young people. It was mostly moved, moved yesterday for some reason to an older group. Um, but, I mean, that would be the trends. It is, again, all over the city. It's spread out. I saw... Um, there are a number of communities in the South Coast are fighting the same thing, and it's a statewide bump. Now, in terms of uh, hospitals, um, you know, we're trying to reach out to the hospitals as well to see how, you know, these this has changed the way they've been, um, you know, challenged by the, the number of COVID <clears throat> cases. What are you hearing in terms of our local hospitals and healthcare centers on how they're dealing with this uptick? Um, St. Anne's has kind of maintained that same position. They don't keep people that have COVID in the hospital. They move them to one of their sister hospitals. Um, I believe the numbers last week that I saw for the three South Coast hospitals were 59 people in the hospital. I think nine were in intensive care. Um, I had a conversation with Billy Burns the other day. He said, you know, they're obviously keeping a close eye on it, as the governor is with his talk of uh, field hospitals or other sites. But right now, um, we're doing okay. You know, one of the things that, I, and maybe it's only, you know, my way of thinking, but I don't know if a lot of people are thinking this way, is that, you know, we're, we're obviously concerned about the number of, of cases on the uptick, and they're higher than they were back in the spring. But it seems like people are adjusting to it more. Um, they're, they're not um, panicking as much, I guess, individually. Um, are, are you getting that same sense in terms of, you know, because we've been at it for eight months, in some ways, we, we kind of know what we're doing now. And it's just a matter of monitoring and not necessarily, you know, panicking over the latest spike in numbers. Right. I, I think I think that's a good way to sum it up. What what's, what I seem to see when I'm out in the community now is people are comfortable dealing with it and realizing, realizing that there are going to be cases. When it, when it hit us the first time, it was like every case was a shock. Now people are almost kind of uh, resigned to the fact that the numbers are going to spike. I think we're on like um, an uptick now, and I think it'll naturally go down, hopefully. Um, I talk to people all the time, and there is nothing that they – they don't really want to hear from a politician anymore telling them to wash their uh, hands, wear a mask. I mean, it's getting a little redundant, and I think what they want to hear from is the medical professionals telling them this is the medical part of it. Obviously, now also there are additional um, therapeutics that can help people when they do get COVID. Um, I think that's why you're seeing a decline in uh, the deaths, which is a great thing. So I'm hoping that uh, we can get through this one with a minimum of uh, minimum of trouble. Mm. I know that you know we rely a lot on uh, what's coming down from the governor's office in terms of reopening and maybe stepping back or not stepping back. Um, but is there a target in your mind where if the city has to take some unilateral action that you'll need to do so? I know that this week the superintendent was saying that the schools are very uh, safe right now. Things are are in a good place in terms of our, our schools and there's no need to cut back there. Are there any benchmarks in your mind that may change things, um, say, in the next few weeks or even a month? Well, I think outbreaks in specific schools would change my mind very quickly, um, but we're not seeing that. We're not seeing anything that's bubbling up to the point where, you know, it would be considered something that would be a threat to the entire school. Um, I, I think, I think kids belong in school. I, uh, I, I worry about them a lot. I mean, I was watching a thing this morning on one of the local TV stations that, that said seventy percent of teenagers are having some mental health issues from the, both the pandemic, the anxiety associated with it, the isolation. Um, it, these are very, very tough times, and we don't know the long-term effects on children. We don't know the long-term effects from COVID, so we're in really in a position where we're floating along here trying to do the best we can, but I am worried that uh, school has become 
something that people always say, well, what about the schools? Well, the schools are helping children. And uh, that's our main focus to do something good for people. So let's see how it plays out. Now, in terms of the rest of the other economy, will that probably your your um, your decisions on that will probably be dictated more from from statewide uh, discussions in terms of saying, you know, overall, we want to, you know, cut back here within the city. Right. I think what we'll do is just follow the, the trends. I think um, economically, Fall River is sitting, you know, in, in, a, in a spot that we're not really comfortable with. We come out the other side of this. I think we're going to be in a great spot. There's a lot of people that are looking to invest in our city. There's a lot of people that are looking to open businesses here. And that's what we're waiting for. Um, I, I've been watching, obviously, Pfizer's reports on its vaccine. And if we can uh, positive news there and something happened, maybe we can get some semblance of normalcy back in our lives. All right. And finally, this week, just one talking about some sense of normalcy. Yesterday was Veterans Day and uh, there were a number of activities leading up to there. There was the, uh, the laying of the wreath at those, uh, the memorial, which uh, displayed those who have given the ultimate sacrifice to the city of Fall River. And then the motorcade yesterday, uh, you were helped by, we were helped by the weather. It was beautiful. A couple of days in Fall River and, and good to, uh, to sort of have, sort of a, a normal uh, celebration of Veterans Day, uh, even though it was the motorcade throughout the city. What did you see yesterday going up and down uh, city streets as you were yeah. a part of that motorcade? Yeah, it was great. It was uh, it was a good time for the residents. They got to get out and see uh, and pay homage to our veterans. Like I always say, they're the ones that allow us to do everything we do. Um, and it was uh, really a positive experience. I was surprised how many people were out and uh, and it was good. It was uh, It was about an hour. Nobody got out of their cars. We kind of bombed around the city, and it was uh, it was a good time. Um, as we sort of look ahead just a little bit, um, any um, news as of this point as to whether you know the next usual big parade is usually the children's holiday parade? Do you know if any uh, plans are moving yeah. forward on that as of yet? We're going to follow that mo motorcade model. We're, we've been working on it for a couple of months with uh, Grace over at uh, Recreation. So we're going to have um, a motorcade with Santa on it. And we're going to end up at um, Government Center where we'll light the Christmas tree all in a COVID-friendly manner. And um, and it'll be something good for the kids. I'm uh, I'm wishing we could do more, even when you have a simple discussion like, can we give out hot chocolate? Can we give out cookies? Everything's a struggle. So uh, we'll find out a way to do this the best we can. But uh, we are going to do something for the city, absolutely. And let's uh, hope we get some uh, delightful weather. Probably won't be 70 degrees uh, in early December, but at least we can hope for maybe a 45, 50 degree day. Uh, be All right. perfect. All right, Mayor Paul Coogan, as always, thank you for joining me. Have a great week. Take care. Thank you, Keith. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you for joining us today here in FRC Media. Have a great day.